Okay, so hey, welcome to the docks. Uh, we, we are, in fact, working on a boat today. Um, we got a suggestion from one of our, one of our viewers uh, who uh, asked if we could do a video on, how, on wiring up a battery bank. Uh, basically taking a bunch of little batteries and making one big one. Um, and just so happened that right after uh, that suggestion, we, we picked up a job to uh, test an existing bank and then replace it and expand on it. So um, what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about how we did that. So um, man, it's a beautiful day out here. Forget the sunglasses, but it's like crazy bright. Um, so uh, hey, let's go get on a boat. Okay, so here we are live on scene. Now uh, what we're going to do here in this particular boat, uh, what we've actually gotten get started on is uh we had a house bank over here which is uh, about two 4d agms uh each about 200 amp hours a piece and uh when we tested this house bank of uh, batteries uh we realized that one of them is testing a little lower than the other so we're going to go ahead and replace the existing two 4d agms and we're going to replace them with uh, six volt uh golf cart batteries of the gc2 agms uh so we're going to actually replace two 4D batteries and we're going to increase our capacity with eight golf cart GC2s. So uh, what I thought is we'd go back to the shop, we could uh, talk a little bit about how we go about building a big battery bank to ensure that uh, every battery there is uh, getting the charging and is contributing to the discharging uh, equally and that the, the bank is balanced. And we'll talk about how we go about doing that. And then uh, once we get this thing installed, uh, we can bring you back and show you what it looks like in real life. So uh, stand by. Okay, so here we are at the whiteboard of nautical knowledge. Um, so, and before we get into explaining how we uh, took a bunch of bat small batteries and built our one big battery bank, I wanted to uh, address a question that I sometimes get. And that is, if when we tested our existing house bank here, we test our two batteries. We had one battery that tested out about 80%. That's not bad. The battery still has some serviceable life to it. But the other battery tested out about 65%. So it's, it's, it's getting to the point it needs to be replaced. Um, so, you know, the question we get sometimes is, well, why don't we just replace the one battery that tested bad? And to answer that, um, it's, in nature, everything always tries to seek a balance, tries to seek a level. And our batteries are no different. If we were to imagine our batteries as containers of water parallel together by a pipe here at the bottom, um, if our our weaker battery, let's say, you were to spring a leak here at about the 65% level, you, know, you can imagine that the water level in this container is going to drop to the level of that leak. Uh, likewise, our battery here, even if this is a 100% good battery, this level is going to drop to this level. The good battery will always be trying to balance with the bad battery. So even if we were to put a new battery in here, uh, our new battery is always going to be trying to seek level with the older battery in the bank. So we replace them all as a unit together. So everything is level and equal. So um, we're going to come back in a minute and we're going to talk about uh, how we took all our little golf cart batteries and made one big battery bank here. And uh, But first, before we do that, uh, uh, a word from our sponsors. Have you ever had one of those just difficult to solve boatyard projects and you just can't seem to think it through? If there was only an easier way! You should try the thunk it! <laughs> Sometimes when you got a complex problem, you just need to sit and think things out. You could sit on a standard milk crate. Amateur. Or you could do your thinking in a swivel chair. Rookie. No, don't be a rookie or an amateur. If you've got some heavy duty thinking to do, do it on the thunk it. It's a win. That's right, it's the Thunket. The Thunket may appear to be any ordinary five gallon bucket, but this one's special. It has more than 10 times the thinking power of any ordinary milk crate, and so easy to use. Step one, put the Thunket on the deck. Step two, park the smartest part of you on top of the bucket. 
and contemplate your problems. Soon the solutions will come pouring in Eureka! and after that you'll be strutting around the boatyard wise and well informed. Thanks, thank you. Smells like someone had an epiphany in here. If you're ready to take your problem-solving abilities to a higher level, order the Thunkit today, only $39.99 plus shipping and handling. Not available in Belarus or the former Soviet Republic or were prohibited by law. Quantities are limited. Order today. As an added bonus, if you order within the next 20 minutes, we will personalize your bucket at no extra charge using our patented Nog and Galvanic boatyard marking system so that everyone will know who the deepest thinker in the boatyard really is. Okay, so that's great. Get your Thunkit today. Quantities are limited. Hurry up and get yours today. And if you go to our website and you enter promo code GOTCHA63, we will add an extra 10% to your total. So hurry and get yours today. Okay, so let's start putting this uh, battery bank together. Well, the first things we got to do is uh, we have a bunch of six volt batteries, but our boat is a 12 volt boat. So we've, first off, we've got to get, we've got to make 12 volt batteries here. Now the six, excuse me. So um, how do we do that? We do that by connecting two six volts together in series to get 12 volts. And the way we do that is we will take one six volt battery and another six volt battery and we will connect the negative of this six volt battery to the positive of this battery with the cable like that. And you say, that seems kind of funny, negative to positive. That Got a spark or something, right? Well, not necessarily because we're basically just continuing on with the way the battery is constructed anyway. So if you look at uh, our six volt battery here, it's going to have three individual cells and inside of those cells there's going to be a positive plate and a negative plate. Now internally these cells are linked together. Each cell having about two volts a piece, so two plus two plus two equals six. We continue over here, eight, 10, 12. We've met our 12 volt battery. Now we do that quite a lot. If you, you know, if you were to look in your flashlight, you'll see an arrangement of batteries like this, or a negative, positive, negative, positive, and that gives you uh, whatever voltage the flashlight requires. You stack the batteries out. Now, when we put a battery or set of batteries in series, we are changing the voltage. Uh, we do not change the capacity. That is to say, if we were to measure from here to here with our volt meter, we would see between them 12 volts. Now, let's say, for sake of argument, this is a 200 amp hour battery, 200 amp hour battery, the capacity does not change, the voltage does. So that's how we uh, put our batteries in series, that's how we get the 12 volts we need for our 12 volt boat. Okay, so if we do two 6 volt batteries together in series, we get 12 volts and you know the same thing will happen uh, if we do it with 12 volt batteries. We need two 12 volt batteries to connect it in series will give us 24 volts. We have not changed the capacity, that is, we have not changed the amp hour of the battery. We have changed the voltage and we can just keep going with this if we want. Uh, we can take four six volt batteries, four times six, 24. Four six volts will give us our 24 volts if we want it. Uh, we could take uh, four 12s and get 48. So in series, uh, as the batteries we put in series, the voltage will increase. Uh, capacity does not. Okay, so step one is done. We got our batteries wired up in series. We got the voltage we need. In this case, we made our 12 volt batteries out of our six volt batteries. Now let's uh, start talking about some ways that we can uh, wire our banks to uh, up the capacity. So uh, we can put our battery bank in parallel. Now, when we're talking about going to parallel, we're talking about take this battery from negative to negative, from positive, to positive. Now what we've done here is we have not changed our voltage. 
if we measure across here to here, we'll still have 12 volts. But what we've done is we've doubled our capacity or increased our capacity. We've taken two 12 volt, 200 amp hour batteries and we've put them in parallel and now we have a 12 volt, 400 amp hour battery. Now, and we can just keep going with this. We can add, if we want to add another battery, we can just put another one in parallel and then we can just go off to our loads. And, you know, this way we've made a battery bank of 12 volt, 600 amp hours. So we've increased the capacity by paralleling, but we do not increase the voltage by paralleling. And now I'll we'll talk a little bit about how to connect them to the boat. Okay, so paralleling our batteries is one way that we can uh, increase our capacity without changing our voltage. Uh, so now let's go ahead and hook this up to the boat. Uh, the most obvious thing to do is just come off of this battery here, go to our loads, negative here, going to our loads. Now, in theory, we have connected our 600 amp hour bank to our boat, uh, but this causes a bit of a problem. If you can imagine, if this battery is in front and our, we've attached our positive cable and our negative cable, this battery here is going to be doing the heavy lifting of the system. He is going to be doing the heaviest discharging and the heaviest, uh, taking most of the charging current. Uh, these two down here are going to be neglected. They're not going to get their share of charge and they're not going to be contributing their fair share of the uh, discharging. So um, this is, you know, this method here works good if, that, if there's only one battery. But uh, once we start adding multiple batteries in parallel, uh, we need to do something a little bit different. Okay, so when we have our three batteries lined up like this, uh, there is a better way to connect them to the boat, and that is uh, diagonally. That is, we're going to pick our positive up out of this corner, we'll pick our negative up out of this corner. Now, in theory, when we're connected this way, you know, we should be spreading the load and the charge more evenly across the bank of batteries. And we do, but what tends to happen is that this battery and this battery, because they're first in line, uh, they take the majority of the charging. So we could have, say, 40% uh, of the charge goes here, 40% of the charge goes here, then the remaining 20 gets here in the middle. Uh, so we're neglecting our middle battery when we do it this way. Uh, one other consideration is uh, we see batteries in parallel like this in some boats, and they're all packed in pretty tight, they're, they're right up to each other. Um, this poor, poor guy here in the middle is taking the heat when batteries charge, they make heat. So he is taking the heat from these two batteries, squishing it from either, either side. He doesn't have the free air where he can let that heat off. So uh, the battery in the middle uh, suffers quite a bit with this particular arrangement. Okay, so there's another way to connect all the batteries in a big battery bank to increase capacity um, without paralleling and um, coming along with some of the complications that go along with paralleling a large battery bank, and that is to do something like this. Now, uh, this is what we did on, our, uh, on the boat that we were working on, and we we're replacing and expanding the battery bank. And what we're doing here is we're installing a main negative DC and a main positive DC bus and attaching our loads to that bus. And then we take each battery and give it its own set of cables, positive and negative, going to that bus. Now the trick with this is we need to make sure that all the cables are exactly the same length, therefore it has the same amount of resistance in the cable. By doing that, what we're trying to achieve is that this bank has the same resistance and it's cabling as this bank, as this bank, as this bank. So everybody's equal and the playing field is level and we are, our charging is coming in and being distributed evenly amongst them as well as our discharging. Everyone is contributing their fair share. Uh, <clears throat> one of the other reasons that we did this uh, in this particular boat is that uh, while we were adding the extra batteries, uh, they did get to be a little bit scattered around. So we have a battery bank with uh, four batteries here. There was two batteries in this box, two batteries in this box. So we, we kind of uh, 
I had to move them around a little bit just you know, in the interest of available space. So <clears throat> this way uh, I think will work really well because each battery now will be accepting charge that evenly and each battery will be contributing to the discharge evenly. So uh, this should work well. So uh, we'll uh, go get on the boat uh, and you can see what it looks like in real life. Okay, so here we are, we're on our boat. Turn this fan off, it's noisy. So here we are, we're on our boat. We've got our big battery bank installed. We took out two uh, 4D AGM batteries, took those out. Uh, that was about 400 amp hours total. We've installed a total of eight golf cart batteries, six volt GC2 AGMs. Uh, so now we've increased our capacity up to about 880 amp hours. Um, I wanted to kind of share with you how we put all this together. And uh, like we talked about back in the shop for this particular um, application, we actually took, made four pair of, of batteries in series to get our 12 volts. And then instead of more or less paralleling them together, uh, we have taken our cabling and routed it to a main positive and a main negative bus and from then on to our loads. Um, so by doing that what we've done is we've we are able to cut each cable to the exact same length and that way this battery bank has the same amount of resistance in the cabling as this battery bank does as this battery as this battery does. So we try to equalize it out so that everybody in our bank here is sharing the load is uh, accepting charge current equally and we try to keep it balanced you know there's some things we can't control um, even though the batteries are new and same size same manufacturer same chemistry everything's the same about the batteries you know there might be a little bit of differences in between them as far as resistance we can't do anything about that but we can do something about our the resistance in our cabling. So what we've done here is we went to the battery bank that is the farthest away from our main buses and that established the length of the battery cable. Um, so it doesn't make for the cleanest installation because you know the this battery is a lot closer than this battery so there's a little extra cable we have to kind of finesse around. So the cabling takes kind of a, a wandering path to get to the bus, but uh, you know it, it's more efficient and our batteries are balanced that way. So let me just uh, take you with me and show you what, what we have here. Excuse it, it's, it's a little tight in here, but here we have two batteries connected together in series, not the two batteries connected in series, and then two pair here each connected in series and here are our individual cables from each pair that go down and we'll arrive at a main bus right here. There's our DC positive main bus or DC negative main buses back there and then from there we go through our battery monitor shunt and then on to the loads. So. <coughs> So, in doing it this way, we've, since our batteries are kind of scattered around, we've uh, did the best we could to make sure that this bank gets the same charge as this one, as this one, as this one. So we uh, try to keep them balanced and nobody's uh, getting shortchanged on the charging or carrying more of the load uh, than they should. So uh, this should work out well.